what are the biggest challenges in applied machine learning today? The problem is that today most people learn machine learning how they would do some sort of research and they should be two different problems. You start with this file that then you transform into an ETLing process. So you, you build like this pandas workflow. However, it doesn't make sense in most cases for you to do those transformations. If the data is coming from a database, likely the database knows how to do these transformations a lot better. The second part that you end up reinventing is how do you expose this model so it can be consumed in production. So this life cycle of machine learning as an application needs to change. What is the best way to do applied machine learning? Every machine learning problem, applied machine learning problem, should start where the data lives and not in the machine modeling part. And beyond that, SQL is probably the best feature engineering tool that exists out there. You know, you, you send a query to the database and you get columns and return those columns and features. From there on, how you kind of to turn those columns into vector representations is more like a, a, an encoding problem that could be automated. So if the data preparation part is solved already, which is the most difficult one, we had a, a, an idea ourselves and it's why don't we enable the same capabilities for modeling and deployment, everything through SQL. And that is a question that we decided to solve. And for that, we came up with a concept called AI tables. And AI tables allow you to summarize all of the machining lifecycle beyond the data preparation, all within the data layer. Imagine that you are a data analyst at the Chicago Transfer Authority, and you are tasked with uh, being able to optimize the number of buses per route. And you actually want to use all the data that you have to be able to forecast into the future using machine learning. And something even more complicated is that you have partitions associated to it. In this case, you have different routes, and that means that a group of time series are associated to just one single route. And this makes the problem of high cardinality. So let's walk into how you can actually solve this problem in a very simple way with MyMTP and Snowflake. And then my colleague Patricia will show you how you can visualize all of this in a BA tool like Tableau. Now, training a model in MyZB is as simple as creating a, a view or another table from a table. What MyZB does behind the scenes here is that it tries a few different models and a few different building blocks to build your predictor. We now get a sort of heat map that indicates to us like the more like the, dark, the darker blues here are routes that are more volatile. If you're dangerous enough and you know what you do in machine learning, uh, or you actually want to tweak them, MyZB allows you to change the behavior of your model as well as all the hyperparameters. And it turns out they compare pretty well. Like MyZB was able to forecast this part of, of the year was uh, when the first lockdowns happened. And clearly the MyZB predictor thought that the usage might go up at any moment, but it instead kept decreasing, right? So. Um, this is a, like, a, like an anomalous situation. The beauty of this is that MyCB abstracts all the complexity of model building, model deployment, all through SQL. So yeah, this is, you know, this is an example, a very brief example of how you do predictive analytics with this combination of MyCB uh, exposing the results to your Snowflake database and then plugging this into Tableau. I hope this has been interesting and uh, I'm looking forward to you know, solving any questions that might come up in the Q&A session. So thank you very much.